Hey guys, Corey here with another concept video. Today, it's all about DNA. In this video, we'll take a look at the overall structure of DNA, the parts that make it up, its locations and variants in different organisms, and we'll also learn how it replicates. So let's get started. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Broken down, this means it is a nucleic acid, a type of macromolecule, and that it contains a deoxyribose sugar. It is often referred to as the fundamental chemical of life, as it is found in all living things on the planet and controls the functioning of cells. Now DNA is made of two long strands, coiled in what's called a helix. The backbone of this helix is made up of repeating subunits of phosphate and sugar, joined by strong bonds that can be seen here. There are molecules called nitrogenous bases that are joined in the middle through weak hydrogen bonds seen here. Now these weak bonds are very important as it allows the strands to be separated for processes like DNA replication and protein synthesis, which we'll talk about in later videos. Now DNA is what we call a large polymer or a molecule made up of repeating subunits of molecules called monomers. In this case, the repeating subunit is called a nucleotide, which is made of a single phosphate, a deoxyribose sugar and a base. These nucleotides join together to make the helical structure we know as DNA. Now there are four different types of nucleotides found in DNA, and these nucleotides differ only in the type of base they carry. The four types of bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Now these bases join in a particular way called complementary base pairing, with A always pairing with T on the opposite strand, and C always pairing with G. Now this pairing is vital as it explains how DNA can replicate as once the combination of bases on one strand is known, the other strand can be made. Now as I said earlier, DNA is found in all organisms, so you can imagine that its function is pretty important, and it is. DNA is basically set of instructions for making proteins, and this information is carried by the unique sequence of bases along the strands. The length of the strand that contains the code for making one protein is called a gene, and many genes joined together create what we call a chromosome. A chromosome is basically the organisational unit of DNA, as it contains proteins called histones, which the DNA coils around, giving it structure. Now, all organisms on the planet contain genes connected together to make chromosomes. However, different organisms contain different amounts of DNA and therefore different numbers of chromosomes. Humans, for example, have 46 chromosomes in their somatic body cells. To add to the complexity, chromosomes can be arranged in different ways and found in different locations depending on the type of cell. Eukaryotic cells, like plant and animal cells, contain linear chromosomes in their nucleus and circular chromosomes in their mitochondria and chloroplasts. Prokaryotic cells, like bacteria, on the other hand, contain only one circular chromosome, which is located in their cytosol. Now that we understand the general structure of DNA, let's have a look at how that structure allows it to replicate. The process in this case is called DNA replication. DNA replication must occur before any cell division as it allows two new cells to be genetically identical to each other and to that of what the parent was. You can think of replication like photocopying a piece of paper. When I do, I will have two copies of the same information and will be able to give the same information to two different people, or in this case, two new cells. Now the process is relatively simple and can be summarised in a few easy to remember steps. First, the DNA unwinds at the start of the chromosome with the help of an enzyme called DNA helicase. Second, free nucleotides found in the nucleus pair up with exposed bases in a complementary fashion, where A pairs with T and C pairs with G. You notice that the growing strand is identical to the opposite strand and this is possible through complementary base pairing. Third, the enzyme DNA polymerase joins the bases together, resulting in the growth of two new strands. This process continues all the way up the molecule the whole length of the chromosome. This process is also called semi-conservative replication because each new strand consists of one old strand and one newly synthesised strand. Well that's it for DNA replication. I hope it helped and remember to check our website soon for more videos.